Hi, and welcome to my first attempt at a video essay. My name is Ruby Justistolo, and what I'm about to present to you is called A Theory of Departure. It is the first essay in a series uh, in which I address um, the ontological issues of the metaverse. You're probably wondering why I'm here two times, once as a face covered in a mesh, and second as an avatar, which does not really share my liking. All the elements in the video, both my own face, this metahuman which I'm using to convey my message, are meant to represent the different aspects of the future of human representation in digital realms. Everything from the glitches, the stops, the rate frames that are skipping are part of what I'm trying to convey as I explore in this specific scenario how, the, uh, how a metaverse is adopted. Think of it as a medium is the message. Why leave? A theory of departure is a framework to understand the adoption of the metaverse. This question was the central focus of my research in the past year. And by departure, I mean specifically spending more time in digital realms than one does in physical ones. Note that this concept assumes a um, certain finiteness and scarcity of time. As we build an increasing number of augmented worlds, why do people migrate to these metaverses? Through, these re through this research, I explore a number of attraction and motivation factors that encourage presence in, in these alternative spaces. In this paper specifically, I posit that augmented worlds that provide users with a net social advantage, meaning a better social life, as understood as a sum of uh, a network of relationships, uh, romantic relationships, and status will attract an increasing number of users over time. You'll see behind you uh, a hint at uh, one of my favorite digital spaces, Second Life, uh, in which many people find love, and this is um, uh, sort of a uh, looping video of a relationship between two users there. In her book, Alone Together, Sherry Turkle ruminates on the impact of technology and socialization, i.e. the ways in which technology alters the way we interact with one another and the social expectations at large. In her exploration of social robots, she describes how nurturance in uh, human-computer interaction is basically the killer app. She writes, in, she writes, in the presence of a needy Tamagotchi, children become responsible parents. This killer app is the first point of departure, a pull towards virtuality. This segment of her research can be summarized by the, posi the, by the position that nurturance as a social dynamic is a strong vector for departure. Of course, these interactions are human to computer, meaning they're limited to the demands of a program machine. What then happens when the social robot becomes a virtual human? This interaction, coupled with two fundamental assumptions, compose the main position of this paper. The fundamental assumptions borrowed from Eugene Way are that people are status seeking and that they seek status in the most efficient way possible. The migration to alternative worlds can be then understood as an equation whereby if the alternative world provides the user with greater social status and economic outcomes than the actual world in which they live, they will become increasingly invested to the point of addiction. The economic segment of the equation lies on the research of the, the economist John Hicks, who wrote in 1932 um, his paper on uh, the economics of migration. Coincidentally, the arrival of Web3 and crypto is facilitating the monetization of digital activities, creating an increased weight on that part of the equation. The social segment, which I call, call net social advantage, is anchored on the attraction and motivation factors that I've described above. These factors are heightened in contemporary digital attractions by um, things like these, you know, these, uh, these avatars. And these represent a difference from the previous media we had. The equation can be visualized as, you have it right here. The equation can be vi visualized as the expansion of George J. Borjas equation from his 2000 paper, Economics and Migration. 
Suppose there is an alternate universe M where one can interact in real time with other human users. An individual is employed and socializes in I, the actual world, where they have a wage W and status S. In the metaverse, they can urge a wage W, uh, WM and the status uh, SM, and there is a U cost to moving to the uh, alternative realm. It may be subscription fees, hardware updates, um, which I may need considering the frame rates on my, on, on my, um, uh, on my metahuman right now. Additionally, the individual has a time horizon T through which they make their decision. This horizon uh, varies based on the person's uh, maturity as demonstrated by Ayla Poor uh, Mohammed in Aimee Drolet's uh, uh, 2019 paper. Younger individuals, as they um, explain, have a shorter time horizon than older folks. Then you have the uh, ga gamma and sigma, which represent the respective weights of the two parts of the equation. Depending on the culture, upbringing, current social trends, the weights can change as to which be between capital and status matter most to the individual. Finally, both capital and status are discounted using R, the respective rate of discount for future cash flows and the fu rate of discount for future status. To leave, as is begged in this essay, the sum of the net economic advantage and the net social advantage must be greater than zero. In other words, there must be a positive advantage to the migration. The economic portion of this equation is straightforward and can be calculated using income data. The social portion, my contribution to the field and what I think makes a more holistic framework understanding migration, can be further broken down. In uh, the reduction and re betrayal chapter in Alone Together, Turkle interviews indiv individuals whose success in simulation tampers their sense of disappointment in themselves. These accounts match the detailed research Nikki has conducted in massive multiplayer online role-playing games. In order to understand how these games lead to addiction, we must understand how these players are motivated. Ultimately, what he uncovers is that two sets of factors can lead to addiction, which I use as a proxy for an, an extreme case of departure. Attraction factors and motivation factors lead players to positive feedback loops that keep them returning to the game. The attraction factors, reward cycles, network of relationships and immersions are the affordance of the game itself. Leveling up and de developing mastery, as Turkle calls it, are the game of the goals of most games, and they feed into reward cycles. Networks of relationships, which are essential to MMORPGs, essentially the MM in the acronym, is what my project is centered around. My research explores how, uh, for instance, romantic relationships play a role in the equation and delves in the emotions in that of, of, of those virtual contexts. These networks are the main innovations of these games, and this augmentation of gameplay is what makes it possible to accrue status in them. Without the network of relationship, no status can be accrued, and therefore the risk of departure or migration is extremely low, since the net social advantage portion of the equation will be negative. You need people to accrue status, essentially, is what I'm trying to say. Lastly, immersion in globe is the two others, as it is the setting in which the reward cycles and network of relationships occur. In this context, immersion is an augmentation of these factors and contributes to their power. Though immersion predates the digital age, for instance, one can be immersed in a novel, one can be immersed uh, through, uh, I don't know, going to church. Um, immersion is augmented through digital technology. Moreover, the audiovisual component of the games play a role in how uh, the players feel immersed. Rudy, one of the young men interviewed by Turkle, describes in his own words immersion when speaking of a game he, he likes. I like the game best when, I get f when uh, if you could get sucked in. The state of immersion is akin to what psychologist uh, Mihaly, um, Chisten Mihaly calls flow or being in the zone as it's colloquially called. Motivation factors are more broad. Ye names low self-esteem, poor self-image, lack of control over one's life, trapped under being trapped by circumstances, undervalued, making and sustaining relationships, and stress in real life problems as examples of motivation factors. In terms of the equation, what they, what they signal is a low status in the actual world. 
and this predisposes the players for an increased participation in virtual worlds, given status is more efficiently accessible in the alternative environment where they are uh, not dealing with these ne negative motivation factors. These coupled with the, with the immersion can lead to a flow state where giving the attention is focused on the game, the player forgets the outside world and acts without self-consciousness. Therefore, they can omit the negativity which may exist when the game is turned off. In short, migration can be understood as the weighted sum of net economic advantage and net social advantage. Net economic advantage is based on the wage differential, while social advantage is based on the status differential. Status in games is conferred by a network of relationships and reward cycles, which I've uh, called also mastery. These relationships can be friendships, but could also be romantic. Um, my research focuses on representing some of these relationships in non-virtual contexts to pull people into the orbits of the games um, and present another vector of departure. And I hopefully this, this uh, retelling of this paper was one of these vectors. Thank you very much.